discussing. Okay, good. So yesterday we were thinking and discussing about uh, research education and open access opportunities. Um, we had a, a few great talks, um, which were basically uh, by, by Andre Mottel and uh, Suzanne Flantour, looking at the uh, comparing global rates of vegetation change, and then Sarah, Sarah Ivory with the dynamics of the abrupt change in the tropical African forests. Um, and we uh, looked at the range mapper by Adrian, and uh, Matthew gave an exciting talk on the better understanding of the past through the lens of functional paleoecology with examples from Southern Australia. And afterwards, we had a, a look at the wild things and where they were. And then Jessica gave us a, a talk on pharaohs. So zooming in on to um, these sort of in first presentations, um, we had, can I get rid of these? So basically we had three cutting edge science presentations of people that had done excellent and exciting science um, with, the, with the data um, in Neotoma. And there was one sort of example of a global um, analysis and two continental ones with, uh, with Africa and, and Australia. The, now I cannot go to the next slide, ah, oh, here. The, then we had two talks, which um, I would summarize on the, the, um, the heading of, of outreach and education. And that was uh, the look at the current developments of, of Range Mapper and these beautiful web page with animations and links to the Neotoma web page of where the wild things were, which I find very inspiring in terms of uh, potential outreach projects that could be done um, with other proxy data as well. And everyone loved the range mapper, of course, including me. Um, Jessica's talk was, uh, was a bit more uh, conceptual, um, but no less exciting. And um, so what she was <laughs> presenting was basically the sort of best practice um, science and, and data curation or a project um, that is aiming at that, focused on vertebrate data. Um, <clears throat> and she doesn't only want to look at um, what well, doesn't want to be fair, but also take care and uh, sort of focus on, um, on care principles, so looking at community sensitive data. So I stole another slide from her presentation um, because I think this summarizes this best. So the, she had sort of three different years and each year has a, a different goal going from um, expanding on the FAIR principles and then creating um, open, um, open science workflows aimed at uh, data practitioners um, and to then explore pathways for implementing the care practices in archaeology and paleoecology data resources. So it probably is something um, that the project will spill something back into Neotoma, I suppose, um, and, um, and, and maybe teach us examples of how we can go um, about doing open science. We're then asked to discuss three questions. And the first was, uh, what kind of science education um, um, are you most interested in? Uh, what informatics developments is needed to achieve your science education or what is these outreach um, options? Um, and what training or help resources are needed to achieve your science education? Um, so, Answering the first one, I think much of the discussion didn't really evolve on this because everyone has a sort of different hobby horses that we're riding or interests. Um, but I think um, we've all seen in these um, scientific um, presentations, the, the first three that I mentioned, um, the, the power of Neotoma um, can be used in sort of cutting edge science on, on continental research. There were voices um, that I picked up from one, some of the slides and discussions, but also earlier um, in discussions and presentations um, that there may be people out there that just dive into uh, Neotoma without um, any uh, 
prior knowledge on sort of not knowing what they're doing. Um, and they produce papers which they send to um, highly respected journals and then they may end up at uh, the table of some of you. I think there have been a few examples about these. Um, and, and so far, I, I think the very terrible examples in some of us uh, in, in the review processes we were able to stop, but this doesn't mean that this continues. And um, I think the discussion about these ways that we, we cannot really prevent these. Um, there is also a voice um, somewhere during uh, this series of, of workshops um, that someone said, I'd like to know about the research that is done with um, the data from my constituent database, which means um, there is sort of the same thing as people that produce uh, the original data, they're interested um, with what, what kind of what is done with my data. That's often what we see in Europe, at least, being the reason for people that want to make the data restricted. So it seems to be that feeling with uh, some of the constituent databases as well. And I mean, as I said, we cannot really prevent people from doing stupid science with the data um, that we provide. However, I think out of these concerns and ideas, um, I believe as a, as a community, we should look for the low hanging fruit. Uh, that can be addressed by the neotonal community because that, as a community um, we do have um, brilliant um, data scientists we have brilliant experts in um, in these spe specific um, fields and it would be it would not be a disaster but it would be a little bit of a pity um, if someone else comes along who has um, a little bit of the right understanding of our data sets and dives in and does beautiful science with it and none of us is involved. Um, it wouldn't be a shame, but it would be a pity. So maybe um, this should encourage us to sort of look ourselves um, for the low hanging fruit and then get together as a community and, and sort of address it with uh, perhaps a um, postdoc or a PhD student as a driving force and uh, other people support. Um, the other two questions, I'll try to organize them a little bit of what I could sort of get out from, from the slides. Um, they were not too rich and um, my own filter is of course uh, put, put on top. Um, but the range mapper um, has come up um, at uh, different um, discussion groups. And one thing that the range mapper may need are again the harmonization tables and in one discussion thing there was the question or a discussion whether or not they could also be perhaps on functional levels um, which i would say is this is more of a research topic but certainly um, harmonization tables and they have emerged at, at several points in these discussions on these uh, workshops so perhaps is this something that we could maybe hardwire into neotoma or if not then sync for um, a, a very good place where collectively they could be stored so that um, the, the, the R package could sort of um, grab them and, and then also we could uh, educate people and, and, and sort of try to enforce to make it best practice that harmonization tables um, are published or sort of are submitted to Neotoma as a um, supplementary data set that is, um, that is of value. Um, there was a discussion on the cross-cutting need on surface samples and calibration data sets of the climate uh, transfer functions. I think that came mainly from uh, the Ostracode community um, or perhaps also from the diatom community who wasn't in that discussion. Then um, I collected some notes on um, things that go more in the, the direction of, of training. Um, so there was the question, uh, what teaching can we do at, at mid-range complexity? Um, because there is also in my group, we had that discussion that perhaps the, the tidyverse and the S2 object, which are now introduced in the Neotoma 2 R package, um, they add a uh, secondary sort of threshold on, on complexity and make it a little bit more difficult for people to get into uh, the Neotoma R package. And then perhaps um, we could sort of develop um, some extra um, sort of helper tools to read out documents from these um, S2 objects um, or develop vignettes that sort of start a little bit before and not sort of starting with uh, directly diving into uh, getting data from Neotoma, but perhaps doing a little bit of a, of a review and a bit of a training of, uh, of the tidyverse functionality 
um, which is basically what Neotoma 2 package is built on. Um, there was also a voice which said, well, you need a better way of sharing, tracking, tracking education. Um, and I'm probably guilty myself of not really sharing the, the education that, that, that I do with, uh, with Neotoma. And therefore, um, I agree that this should be um, an important thing to do. So these are, from my perspective, the main things that I was um, able to pick up. But if uh, people are here that um, were in these sessions yesterday, then um, you may want to add, or I don't know if that happens in the discussion afterwards. I'm two minutes, three minutes short. Um. Yeah, I'm not totally sure about the best way to structure it, but let maybe just uh, let's allow just a couple minutes for any comments of you know, things that were missed, other things people would like to add into this this summary. And then we'll, we will have time at the end though for a fuller discussion. I'll just say I thank you very much, Thomas. I think that was really helpful, and I think it's nice that in a lot of ways the things that you touched on also. Um, I think I'm going to touch on a little, like some of those things I'm going to touch on a little bit. So it does seem like uh, it's nice that the goals of this community across our different levels are, are being mirrored throughout the sort of different branches that we've identified here. So. Suzette? Yeah, thanks for this overview, uh, Thomas. I just wanted to say that I wanted to second what you said about the kind of, uh, um, like, a, let's say, opportunities and also challenges and risks by having, you know, the, the Neotoma open and Neotoma 2 and people being able to source data extensively and then doing all kind of analysis with it without having the background, um, the background knowledge of, of the things that they should be doing and especially of course that many people then lack the the big bulk of literature about discussions about you know the diversity and the harmonization and, and so forth so i think that in in part it, it lays also the responsibility with us the the proxy experts that we you know have these kind of uh, publications as andra has been discussing this week like you know this guide through of things that people sh really should be doing and then but also doing it you know, work package wise that, that things can actually be reproducible. And I just want to kind of repeat what Andre just said is that from like in many particological uh, journals, that kind of data handling aspect is often has often been very descriptive and not kind of publishing codes. Um, so what I would want to add to that is that I, I think it's important that for the different proxies that there are these guides, guidelines of how to really, you know, do proper analysis. Uh, code wise and that we share our our analysis in that but also adding to what you said is I agree that there 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 are all the different synthesis and papers being done in different parts and that we as a community can really get together and do like you know trans global stuff and and showing how things are are being done reproducible and and trying to handle all the all the messy issues with all these uh, polio data so yeah, so I'm just kind of adding to what you said, but I, I really agree that there's there's much also that that we can from ourselves uh, do to uh, to to really stimulate the proper use of of data and flagging things that should be really should be on the list of uh, the the don'ts uh, in terms of having uh, having this uh, this wide access. So yeah. Yeah, I, I, if I can comment, I, I think we will never be able to stop all the stupid usages of data in Neotoma. Um, <clears throat> and just be hopeful that we can, that we we be on the on the people that are asked to review the papers that are coming out of it. But, uh, but I think with, with all this experience, with the experience of, of the whole project and what Andre and you did, um, another great sort of projects we could then also ourselves look at the low hanging fruit and say, well, we've brought these database together. We put all these data in. Um, I have a great idea, but I don't have time to develop it. Um, maybe someone else, so maybe a, a, a sort of idea post on, on Google Drive and um, sort of which science can we do to pick together as a, as a community? 
Uh, was, we had once that discussion within the EPD. Um, we never did anything about it. Um, but yes, I mean, constituent databases, they also feel that naturally they're interested if someone else does something with their with their with the data that they're curating uh, not that the database wants to stop them or it wants to have a sort of um in the, sort of um an owner right on it but it, it'd just be nice to to see what's going on and maybe coordinate and maybe get in touch and um sort of open science should also sort of be inviting rather than um sort of restricting Okay, this is a good discussion. I, uh, let's um, move forward with, I think, Sarah Ivory summar summarizing uh, conversations from Monday. Yeah. Um, okay, just let me share my screen. Okay, so, okay. So, yeah, so now we're kind of going back in time to um, Monday which was the day that uh, was structured a little bit differently from the rest of the days, um, because this was the day that um, individuals, in, like um, certain individuals from each of the constituent databases um, presented their um, needs and, um, and progress and next steps um, from the last three years. So I put on here again, so Jack gave the first talk that day and he put the stated goals for the workshop at the beginning of that talk, which I just wanted to put up, put up there again, just so that we're all kind of thinking about them again, which is where are we now, where to go and what do we need in order to get there. And so I frame my talk a little bit differently from Tomas's because our session was so different in that it was mostly talks and it wasn't a lot of discussion. Um, and so what I've tried to do is kind of take every like details from everybody's talks um, from the official notes, from my notes, and then going back and like re-listening to some of the talks and try to find sort of convergent ideas amongst all of those talks, but also things that maybe only appeared in a few talks, but that seemed really important to certain communities or really to, to everybody, even if they only appeared in certain talks. Um, okay, and just to give everybody a reminder of what those talks were, I'm not gonna go through them all individually, um, but they span a wide range of uh, geographies and a wide range of proxy types, as well as a wide range of kind of um, maturities in terms of how long they've been constituent databases within Neotoma. So some of them, um, you know, are central to Neotoma and then and from the very beginning and others are, are just emerging um, and just um, putting together their structure and controlled vocabularies right now. So uh, it's a huge diversity of, of different people. Okay, so I also wanted to just really quickly reiterate some of the recent activities and accomplishments that were highlighted during Monday's sessions. These are just a very small amount of those. Um, so in terms of data stewardship and curation, um, Neotoma has been growing really substantially. I took the, um, the snapshot of the database that Simon put on Slack and just summed the total number of data sets put on to upload it onto Neotoma in the last year. And it was 2,821 data sets in the last year. Um, uh, there's a lot of Holland data in particular, but probably other proxy types as well that um, are starting to have data mobilization campaigns in areas that have historically like not been as well represented on Neotoma, like in the tropics and in particular in the Southern hemisphere, um, as well as a lot of new incoming data types that are not necessarily as restricted geographically. Um, and so we heard from new databases, um, constituent databases, for dinoflagellates, um, for fire, paleo fire, biomarkers, and um, ancient environmental DNA. Um, in terms of web services and software um, recent activities, there's a new website, a new Neotoma website. Um, Simon talked in other days as well about um, the Neotoma 2 package now being submitted to CRAN um, and all of the cool things that have been uh, starting to be done with that. Um, and then also there's a lot of new uh, third party services that use the Neotoma uh, APIs like the NOAA Paleoclimatology database, um, Linked Earth Project, Globe and Pollen Project and, and others as well. And then just in terms of a few things related to research education and enhancing access, 
Um, there are a lot of communities that, that mentioned um, moving from mobilization. So they're getting to a phase in sort of data mobilization where they're starting to think about moving from mobilization to actually applying data to research. And I, I sort of throughout the talk, as I, if I mention something, I try to flag the particular people or constituent databases that mention this in their talk. So this was in particular the test aid MEV, the diatom group, LAPD, LAPD, the lead 210 group, APD, Ostracod databases, and probably others as well, but those are ones that specifically mention this, which is kind of an interesting point to be at. Um, and a lot of people talked about virtual and in-person workshops, both related to um, stewarding, supporting science and research, as well as um, Neotoma 2 specific workshops. Okay. Um, so needs and wants, I, I have, uh, because there were a lot of talks and specifically we were asking each of the stewards who are presenting for their constituent database what their needs and wants were. There were laundry lists of needs and wants, but there were a lot of convergent topics amongst those. And so what I have on this list, um, I, I, they, they may be things that, they're, they're generally things that apply to most of the talks. So they would probably be big wins across all the constituent databases in terms of benefits things that might represent the quick wins as we've tried to frame things, or things that maybe only directly affect a few of the constituent databases but seem really important. Um, and one other thing that, uh, that was said on Monday by Jessica during her talk was something about in her vertebrate talk about um, trying to think about things that could make doing science easier. And so I I'd also thought a lot about what those things were as I was putting this slide together. So uh, needs and wants in terms of data stewardship and curation. Um, there's a lot of stuff about Tilia in here, both under data stewardship, as well as web services and software. But I tried to break those out into things that like more directly related to each of those categories. So basically everybody mentioned um, uh, that it would be really useful to have more Tilia support and upload support in some form. Um, and then there were a lot of more specific things about Tilia as well. Um, and so a lot of the ostracod groups and the vertebrate groups mentioned um, that specimen handling in Tilia, as well as in Explorer, Neotoma Explorer, was very cumbersome. Um, and then another thing that was talked about Tuesday, as well as on Monday, was that taxonomy within Tilia is also a really big bottleneck for all communities that use that. Um, Outside of Tilia, in terms of data stewardship, there was a need amongst most of the communities for more steward time and training. Um, I'll talk about this in the next slide too, but we have a lot of like older constituent databases and newer constituent databases. And I wondered if there were opportunities for those, the communities of sort of like different levels of maturity to pool resources in those ways to kind of um, help with steward training and support and, and that kind of thing as well. Um, there was a mention of a need for a data submission template that might be constituent database specific, but that it would be useful to have some centralized resources for those. Um, and I think a lot of constituent databases have them already. Um, and I also, there were, there were multiple different constituent databases that talked about um, having data types within constituent databases that didn't necessarily link to the stated mission of that database. So for example, the EPD has a lot of data that isn't just pollen, while the ostracod databases um, would like other data types potentially associated in some way, like ostracod geochem geochemical data. So there's kind of a, a problem of some databases having been a catch-all and others wanting to be linked to other data types where they're not. Um, there were some uh, issues of geographic coverages in that some constituent databases are kind of geographically constrained, in particular to Europe and North America, um, even though their, their focus, potentially their taxonomic focus, isn't geographically constrained. And so I wondered if there were connections within the Neotoma community from a lot of the, the experts, maybe within geographically restricted um, like areas of focus, where they could help connect people with um, those taxon types in other geographic areas. So for example, um, the Ostracod database is mostly focused on North America. I know Ostracod experts in Africa. Is there an interest for trying to expand geographically in that way as well? Um, in terms of web services and software, also, so again, back to like some issues with Tilia and improvements for Tilia, 
that it's cumbersome for specimens. And then for everything else, I went through everybody's talk and I made a spreadsheet of, of everybody's wants and desires for improvements for Tilia, which I didn't feel like I needed to get into all of the nitty gritty with those. Uh, but there was generally a desire for some sort of like expediting or smoothing of the upload process. In terms of like the process itself, documentation around the process, um, the making of age models, in particular non-radiocarbon dated age models, um, and then the taxonomy, which I've mentioned. Every group mentioned a bulk, bulk uploader. So I think related to that, every group mentioned a bulk uploader um, would be a high priority. Um, and then there was mention at least a few times of an embargo manager as well, which is something that has been talked about for a while. It seems super important for some constituent databases, but even if it's not something that's at the top of the list for um, other constituent databases, it seems pretty generally important for, for everybody on the long term. And like Tomas mentioned, this links to not just the FAIR principles, but also the CARE principles um, and you know, the ability for indigenous communities to uh, have some authority to control um, who's, using, who's using their data. Um, there was mention of um, revisions tracking and error fixing as needs um, through web services and software. And then there was also mention of, of outages coming at inopportune times so um, some arrangement of like optimal timing for those obviously needed outages could be could be useful. Um, and then in terms of research education and enhancing access, um, the need for community specific training tools, which are already underway through um, Simon and Socorro's development of all of these new Neotoma 2, essentially Neotoma 2 instead of Neotoma R, but I put this together late last night. Um, the Atoma 2 um, vignettes, and then also training, steward trainings. So that was another thing that people mentioned. And then we've talked a lot about taxon harmonization. There are a lot of groups that mentioned this specifically, the diatom group, the EPD group, the paleo fire group, and APD among others that have taxon harmonizations or are developing them, but they're largely done offline. Um, and so I felt this way too with the APD that um, I'm, I'm always like proselytizing the the good word of the taxon harmonization and where it is, but people seem to like not know much about it because it's kind of hidden away on another website. Um, and then a lot of people mentioned um, it's specific for pollen links to pictures. So maybe there's an opportunity there um, to work with the Global Pollen Project. Um, in terms of opportunities, I'll go through this as quick as I can. But um, I, you know, I was thinking about the idea that there's obviously finite resources. And so we can try to get funding for new resources. Another thing that we can try to do is do more with existing resources. And so that's how I've tried to frame these opportunities. I went through all of the talks and I um, made a list of all of the funding opportunities that were grants that were just starting in either 22 or 23. So they still have you know, quite a bit of time left um, to do what, they, what their stated goals are to do. And so these things are the NSF um, grant of Jessica's, the Pharos grant, um, Bob mentioned just getting an NSF NERC grant, and then Simon Hamerly has a, a new grant as well um, through the Center of, of Excellence for Indigenous and Environmental Histories and Futures in Australia. And then I also noted people that had grants in the pipeline um, to be submitted like in the next year. These include um, the Geoinformatics grant. Um, Suzette mentioned a, a Norwegian grant. Tomas mentioned a European grant. Um, and Tricia mentioned um, another NSF grant to support um, ancient DNA. Um, if there are others, maybe people just didn't mention them, let me know and I'll compile them because that might be useful for everybody to know sort of what's going on and what's included in those things. Again, to try to like do more with existing resources. Um, so thinking more about doing more with existing resources, there are, we have people at very different stages, very mature stages that like have a lot of infrastructure developed and people that are developing infrastructure if we can, we shouldn't reinvent the wheel. So some communities have things that other people's need. So cross-linking um, database communities could be really useful for this. And so I was just thinking about, are there connections between emerging databases and existing ones that might be useful, especially for those developing databases? So for example, fire and biomarkers link to a lot of other constituent databases. So can they leverage things like pre-existing information in the database, steward support, documentation, training, all of those things. Um, 
in terms of developing and sharing taxonomic harmonizations, expanding geographic scope, and, and I thought making a spot for communal resources around process documentation, data templates, that kind of thing could be useful. Um, and then one other really cool opportunity is that new constituent databases are building their taxonomies and controlled vocabularies in order to link with these other um, resources like PAST and Lipid. And so that is a super powerful thing for them. Um, in terms of the R package, there's a lot of opportunities for new and existing vignettes uh, for people mobilize or pivoting from mobilize, mobilization to science. Um, is there a way to include, I mean, note tax on harmonization is included to some extent in these vignettes, but is that a good place for that in order to make them sort of more widely known? Um, and these also seem like great opportunities for outreach and education. Um, another opportunity, the embargo manager for respecting these care principles, vertebrates um, and Jessica seem to be leading this, but it might be an important thing for other databases to consider as well, because this does actually seem like a really important outreach activity or opportunity. Um, this was something just mentioned by one group, but I kind of wanted to know more about it, and it was connections with managers. Don and Joy talked about a new collaboration with the National Park Service, and so I wondered, is there funding here or other opportunities, and what tools do these communities want and need? Um, and then at the end, this is kind of like a terrible thing for me to put in here, but I said, Tilia, do we stick with it, all of it, part of it? Maybe not for taxonomy in order to smooth out that process, maybe move to some other tool, but it's a valid a point for discussion. And I'll just finish up really quickly with some of these next steps that I saw. A lot of this stuff that I mentioned in terms of opportunities is already in the pipeline in that there are at least sort of starts, beginnings of some of these things. Um, we're continuing to grow. A lot of projects are moving um, from mobilization to research. Um, the Slack workspace might be a great place for us to share resources that have been created in some way in order to link these, these communities. Um, and I also wondered if there were upcoming steward trainings, because um, a lot of uh, groups mentioned needing those. Um, in terms of uh, web services and software, um, the server is going to be moving for, to the cloud. So there's the opportunity for outages with that to be planned for optimal times. Um, people talk about a bulk, bulk, bulk uploader, which is in the pipeline, and a lipid neotoma converter, and then um, there's all of these new statistical tools that are available. Um, in the pipeline, lots of new up-and-coming uh, neotoma 2 workshops, especially at INQUA, um, and there's a lot of other individual groups that talked about doing um, workshops or meetings. Things that had a less clear timeline for next steps um, were things like the embargo manager, Tilia fixes big and small, and I realized like some of the things seem small, but the fixes themselves may not be small. So that's those are things to consider. Um, a taxonomy tool, um, and then support of all kinds. So there was that was mentioned by almost all of the groups, and that would be both at the constituent database level in terms of like steward support, as well as at the neotoma level for like IT support. Um, and then I thought like leveraging these already built community resources for for their growth as well. Um, so that's what I had. Sorry, I actually ended up having a lot more than I expected that I was going to have, but um, that's that was my report from Monday then. Sarah, that was fantastic. Thank you for summarizing a lot of information and I think some, yeah. some really good ways. Thank you. Uh, comments, reflections, you know, plus ones, the things Sarah brought in, things you know that were missed or want to comment on? I'll just say again, you're, I'll just say again, as Jessica commented in, in the chat window, that was a wonderful synthesis and, you know, it just really pulling out a lot of disparate, you know, like, you know, there's you know, the find the points of commonality. And I think that just gives us a lot to think through and yeah, so thank you. We'll, we'll, this is a great starting point. Yeah, of course. Okay, let's go to, um, let's see, I think is it um, Don for talking about the taxonomic conversation on Tuesday? Or Allison, who is, I'm sorry, I've probably forgotten here. Hi, it's uh, Don and I are going to do it uh, together so that one of us can look at the chat while we, while we, while the other does this. Um, I'm going to begin. Uh, I put the slide deck in the, um, in the Neotoma folder. Do you have it or do I, do I need to share my screen? 
Simon, are you, are you able to uh, share screen so I can keep this? Um, yeah, I, I can share my screen. Just a second. Okay. Let me or I can, ahead. if it's not. I'm just worried you'll see that after seeing Sarah's presentation, I've been making a lot of changes to mine so that it looks better. <laughs> well, I didn't have that opportunity. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm just uh, kind of uh, follow the stellar performance there. So, <laughs> okay. okay. Just, uh, just, just yell beep, whatever you want me to change. Okay. Slide. Absolutely. Okay. So, so, uh, uh, Don and I, I went through an incredible amount of commentary following our taxonomic working group day. So this was Tuesday and it began with Stefan Walters giving us a stunning overview by way of the Tilia taxon tables of what is going on. And I think for many of us, we hadn't seen that that uh, 30,000 foot view of, of uh, what was in there. And so uh, the achievements and pitfalls was, uh, talk that he gave was really, really impressive. And I think we all took away for our own proxy groups, we all took away some eye-opening uh, uh, views of that. Um, Simon then uh, followed with uh, a, a great slide deck, which you can access, which is uh, redesigning taxonomic hierarchy. And um, I think that um, he brought out a number of really key issues for us that fed the uh, the discussion, which, which then ranged widely. So uh, we're really, really glad that Simon uh, kind of put together a lot of information that then fueled a discussion. So what we did next, okay, you next. Uh, that was quick. Oh, here, okay, there we go. I see okay. there's animation. So, I got so it. the next, so the, the thing is, the the uh, purpose of Tuesday was, uh, you know, getting all these people involved in taxonomy, getting all these, these, uh, these uh, taxonomic stewards together to raise questions that, that would identify some of the issues and, and, uh, concerns and 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 ideas for forward progress and so there were a lot of questions and and uh don and i put together uh many current issues that that came up um some of these will now seem familiar after the first two uh synth syntheses we've just heard uh can we have a taxonomic management system outside of neotoma tilia uh this leads to what about external taxon lists, taxonomic lists that can be updated and searchable from inside of Neotoma? This is all going back to an issue that is that everyone shares, I think, which is um, the uh, the dynamic nature of taxonomy and uh, the questions of how to handle synonymies and how how the names. Uh, taxonomy is, in fact, extremely dynamic, and and lists are are changing all the time. Uh, a, a plaintive cry for can we clean up the taxa names? Can we make ecological groups more flexible? Uh, some some view ecological groups as as you know needing more options, uh, having more uh, pull down menus available. Others perhaps view ecological groups as why don't we just remove them. So, you know, there's a lot of, of uh, talk in there, but having having perhaps a more flexible approach. Uh, and then the synonymies. Uh, can we clean up the synonymies and link to external species checklists for some groups? Um, and that raised a uh, discussion on transparency. Uh, transparency for synonymies, transparency for having a name and record so that we can always track the name changes. Uh, can we search and return at the family level, at the order level? That's not really possible right now is, you know, could it be? Um, can we manage uncertainty um, in a better way than we do right now, which where we, we use a lot of terms, of course, type, CF, uh, sensu, but uh, we do this quite in quite a, a, a broad approach. 
Can we produce manuals for taxonomy, proxy specific, and neotoma in general? Uh, this is something that I think everyone has uh, made some kind of progress on already. Uh, I think pollen is probably way out there ahead of some of the other groups. Uh, I know that uh, diatom, the the diatom group has some um, has some uh, manuals or field guides to to dealing with diatoms in neotoma. Uh, uh, the ostraca group is in its infancy on this. I'll just say that. Um, and uh, then going back to a name and record, a way to, to, um, to track what has happened to names as we go forward in time. Taxonomic harmonization was a huge question, a lot of, a lot of discussion about this. Uh, an idea came up about maybe developing a two-step process, something that happens within and then also outside of neotoma. Uh, should there be protocols? Should we actually formalize things here? Next. No, oh. <laughs> sorry. If I if I click on the Zoom controls, it takes away. Whatever. Yeah, no, no, I get I'm it. Paying attention. No, it's, not just... a problem. it's not a problem. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to let uh, uh, Don go through our our uh, our goals uh, for. Um, you know, I feel like we're missing a slide. Can you back yes. up one? Yes. There it's there. There we go. Quick wins. Okay. All right. Uh, Don, your turn. I'll monitor the chat and I see there's things oh, I coming. Think you're, okay. I think you're going to do the quick wins, but. Okay. I'll do it. So, uh, so short term, uh, we have this, this proposal is coming up this uh, at the end of this summer in August. And so looking at short term quick wins that that might be useful for this upcoming proposal, or at least until the start of the next grant. Um, uh, I think there's a lot, there's interest in forming a taxonomy working group within the Atoma. We could make use of Slack. Uh, we we could uh, discuss database wide issues. Agree to do that. And um, I think perhaps most importantly, develop a list of tools that are needed for stewards to manage taxonomic information. Just getting a list together of, of the kinds of tools we, we would like to have exist would be a big step. Um, cleaning up taxa names, that's going on all the time, but maybe we could, we could do a big focus on that um, and consider how we might uh, make use of external checklists, you know, published checklists and so forth to be linked or accessible to Neotoma. Um, do we need to develop a protocol for taxonomic harmonization in general? Uh, is this something that we should think about? I think uh, there was interest in that and um, developing a general plan for the upcoming proposal on how we will address taxonomic issues so that there is something in the proposal about forming a working group and what they might be able to do. Um, next slide. Okay, Don. Okay, now I finally, uh, I have um, two slides that will focus on the idea of big wins. And <clears throat> we were defining uh, big wins is things would be longer term and they certainly would involve uh, anything that has to do with the restructure of neotoma. So in, anything that it would involve <clears throat> adding or changing tables and relationships of tables and so forth. I, in, in our taxonomy sessions, we heard a lot of suggestions for kinds of things that can be done. And, and I think overall, we've narrowed down the scope of what tax, what the taxonomy related issues are, or at least have a, a core group of, of topics that need to be considered. And some of these changes that take a while, they, they might be able to be implemented on their own, uh, but probably several of them also are interrelated. You could start working on one and find that it in, involved changes in something else. 
uh, and there are also <clears throat> issues of priorities and so forth. So because of that, <clears throat> there is a suggestion of having a, a working group that would help sort sort those things out, help focus on taxonomic issues, but help set priorities to, to work with individual constituent databases and maybe make some kind of a matrix or some kind of an uh, overall data re resource that would help in deciding what to do, uh, when to do it, and who might be involved. Um, and then kind of a subset idea was having a subset of that working group be taxonomic experts that would deal with just the pure taxonomy aspects. And there was also a suggestion that because these kinds of activities are important for other groups that have databases that we take a look at how they uh, manage the tax making the taxonomy decisions that they need to make okay the second one there uh, were a lot of issues about the taxonomy tables uh, stefan's uh, observations and suggestions about uh, cleaning up that need to be done and also the general need uh, for changes in uh, Telia and Neotoma and the need for tools of, uh, for stewards to be able to do a lot of the work that maybe then Simon wouldn't need to do so much of. Uh, but some of these uh, a, a work that needs to be involved would be necessary restructuring of the Neotoma database. And then of course, creating this special use outside user interface. So a big question is, do we just work with what we already have primarily at first or do we really have how much effort and how to prioritize an external tool? Okay, systems for harmonization, a lot of talk about that. Uh, big issue is internal versus external. And I, my reading was that people want to have and some kind of internal, some of the harmonization systems be internal. <clears throat> uh, but in order to do that, there would have to be some additional, maybe semi-sophisticated system that would allow for differences amongst the constituent databases that might allow a taxon to be part of more than one harmonization system. Uh, but there's still externally could be harmonization systems developed prior to adding them to Neotoma or for short term or very specific research interests. Bulk uploading, many people have mentioned it. I don't think there was too much discussion in terms of the details of doing it. It was more where in the list of priorities that would fall who really needs bulk uploading, who, who doesn't, or at least would, for whom it would be a lower priority. Uh, next slide. Simon, beep. Oh. There should be another, I think you might've skipped over a slide. There it is, continued. Okay, just four more points. Uh, there was a lot of discussion about an need for new ways to handle synonyms that, that might also, uh, well, also related to that are undescribed taxa and how to document those undescribed taxa by images or being able to put some uh, more info, more metadata in that would make undescribed taxa um, more meaningful to users, links where they could find more information on them. They'd need to search by uh, these higher orders. So there's this whole idea of how to handle higher order taxonomy is uh, tricky. And that might be something that would be considered by this special taxonomic experts subcommittee. There was a need for centralized documentation on a whole variety of aspects of taxonomy. A lot of database 
uh, stewards had uh, certain questions about how they're going to go about uh, doing things, whether it's, well, just a lot. Uh, I think you're familiar with a lot of what those might be. Uh, ecological groups, also a lot of questions about that. I think there's a definite, it was a definite, I wouldn't say consensus, but there was a lot of people that would say we really need to have those ecological groups in Neotoma. However, the system for including them needs to be more flexible, we need to be able to allow more uh, ecological groups and allow assignment of taxa to more than one ecological group. There still might be external uh, grouping, ecological groupings, but my, my sense was that people definitely still wanted for various practical and other reasons to have something within the Neotoma database. Um, and then there was also a desire to create links with external taxonomy databases to save time, to provide links to uh, more taxonomic information, nomenclature information, and maybe uh, links to images and, and other uh, sorts of information. And there's a lot of ex examples where one database has uh, linked to another to get this ecology or the uh, this taxonomic information. Okay, that's that. And it, you could go to the next slide, Simon. And, and so, time for discussion. <clears throat> People can tell us what we might have left out <laughs> or what they stress certain things that they think were important. So one of the one of the uh, points that's coming up in the chat is is about the ecological groups, and one of the fundamental uses for that is making the diagrams and um, and uh, having a in the stratigraphic diagram or being able to to group uh, taxa in different ways. Uh, uh, Vert Paleo is uh, basically using order. Uh, they're doing their their uh, grouping by by uh, the order. And, and so people use the ecological groups uh, for, I think several, a couple of reasons, but a primary reason is for the uh, stratigraphic diagrammer. And another is more for um, direct ecological information if you're pulling up this kind of, this these kind of data. So um, I think because of that, there are going to be different views on this. Um, so, all right. I feel like that. I feel like, uh, one of the, um, one of the things we may not have really talked about, uh, I think is, is going back to, uh, problem solving. I think having a, a working group, a taxonomic working group in existence will help us enormously. Just this meeting has helped me. I've heard solutions to problems that, that I've been spinning my wheels about. I've just heard sort of anecdotally. <laughs> so I think it would be it would be a great thing to have this. That's something I don't think we quite made clear. Jessica, you've got your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Um, a great synthesis. Um, I was thinking a little bit with this, and I think the issue with ecological groups is similar to taxonomy, but really thinking through, you know, what is something used for and is it is it filling that function, right? Like, and so we use it for plotting. I mean, many groups use it for plotting, but the pollen folks use it also for calculating the pollen sum. Right. Um, and the pollen sum is critical to calculate for pollen data, but is that necessarily like, like eco ecological group, right? So like, are there things, are we trying to do too much with ecological groups? And so because we're, are we sort of using maybe the concept of grouping taxa by function in a way that actually is more mechanistic, which is just calculating the pollen sum or grouping things in order to plot them. And can we decouple those in some way, right? So I just, that was just a point of like, that, you know, I think maybe one of the charges um, in a taxonomy working group is thinking through 
the different use cases um, and trying to categorize them and seeing if they, they need to be filled by the same thing or if they can be actually filled by different functionality, different variables within our tables, so. Thanks, that is a, that is a key point, thank you. Okay, I'm uh, just kind of looking to see if we can, if anybody has any comments. I cannot see if anybody has a hand up. So I think that may be it. Thank you very much. That was great. Yeah, great. So Simon, over to you for the, the informatics summary. All right. Uh, let me, sorry, let me share my screen. And do that. All right, uh, informatics rundown. No one talked about AI, but I generated a bunch of images for these slides with AI. Um, so just to summarize the talks that we had, uh, so Jonathan, uh, so in no particular order, although it does spell JSON down the side, um, Jonathan talked about uh, the usability survey for R and the different, uh, for R Explorer, uh, the different sort of Neotoma uh, end products. Uh, Socorro talked about the R package um, and the online uh, remote workshops that we've been doing. Andre talked about Fossil Paul and uh, workflow for sort of uh, large scale synthesis using pollen. Um, in R, Nick McKay talked about Lipid and the experience of trying to build this tool set that could uh, transform between Lipid uh, and the Lipid data format and then the uh, Neotoma R data format, uh, giving us then connections to the different Lipid tools for chronology construction and uncertainty analysis. And I spoke about the bulk uploader and our experience uh, building these tools to facilitate upload directly into the database. I wanted to summarize it a little bit uh, in thinking about this as layers of the Neotoma cake, basically where we have some things interacting directly with the database, these layer, this API layer then, and then the tool sets either like Fossil Paul, which I think in large part just uh, pulls from the API, uh, and then things like the R package and Lipid, which are interacting more directly with the R environment. And then down at the bottom, there's uh, Jonathan Nelson, who's sort of checking to make sure that everything is usable for, uh, for the community. And I think one of the reasons that, oh, um, one of the reasons I wanted to show it in this way is that when we got into the comments and the discussions from users uh, at the end of the meetings, I think one of the uh, one of the key things here is that as these pieces here, and I guess to to a larger or to a lesser degree, but still um, to some degree, the R package as these have now stabilized, um, this is really opening up the opportunity to, uh, to build these sort of end products down here, um, which then will allow more end user development and allow us as like a core informatics team to focus on usability. Uh, so with Jonathan Nelson down at the bottom and stability of these products here. And so that, that came up with talking about downtime of the, of the API, for example, um, but then also the stability of the API. So I think this came up with Andre. So they're talking about how in some cases the, the what was being returned from the API was actually changing. So um, these are these are sort of this is the evolution up to I would almost say yesterday when the R package finally went on to CRAN, um, we now have the ability to say, okay, let's let's really stabilize these two key pieces, this API and the R package, 
I think the next move, uh, Sarah alluded to this, is the move to bring Neotoma up into the commercial cloud. So using something like AWS, and that actually gives us, uh, certainly there will be hiccups on the way, but the nice thing about commercial cloud is it lets you really prototype things in a way that working on a single university server has not enabled us to do. So I, I just want to summarize that process a little bit to then get to these big summaries. And I, I didn't go into as much detail as Sarah or Don went into, but I, I really tried to give a high level summary. And I think we can talk about this. I think one of the key things that came out was this idea of decentralizing the informatics knowledge and um, and the ability to do informatics work. Uh, and so part of that is, again, saying, okay, we need the core services to stabilize because those things happen at a very high level in the, in the tool set of Neotoma. Um, those changes really happen on the Penn State server and very few people have access to that. So if we can stabilize the API at version 2.0, that endpoint will always be there. And, um, and it means that then people can develop things on that API without having to constantly go through like myself or Socorro or, um, or whoever else. Um, the other piece is uh, both increasing the number of training opportunities and workshops and making the documentation of these sort of high level informatics pieces, uh, increasing the, the visibility of that documentation. And again, this reduces the overhead for, uh, for myself and helps democratize the knowledge about the database. And so that means that individual groups, so for example, I think Sarah talked about connecting to uh, the global pollen is it the it's not the global, uh, the pollen database. I, I'm sorry, I've forgotten the name right now. Um, but you know, the, knowing our API and knowing their API would potentially allow us to build new tools without you know me having to build it because everything would be documented. And I think, again, the other opportunity here is sort of a training the trainers um, thing that would then allow more groups to actually start teaching R um, and, and teaching how to use these tool sets. And we've already seen the success of that, I think, in part. Um, uh, Thomas and Peter uh, ran a really successful workshop, I hope, for the Paleo Fire people. Um, I was able to sort of join in on that, but um, Peter Kunis uh, basically wrote a whole vignette about doing some cool fire, uh, pollen fire charcoal um, analysis. Uh, but, and that sort of goes along with this next point of supporting key workflows. So a lot of the comments uh, in key needs were like, I want to see how to go from a download to different kinds of plots. I want to see um, how to do new chronologies or, or something like that. And I think, again, this goes along with both visibility of documentation and these vignettes and worked examples, I think it also goes along with increased opportunities for training. Uh, Thomas, I, I don't know if he's still here, but he did mention, um, uh, what did he mention? Oh, he mentioned talking about tidyverse and like teaching tidyverse. Uh, and so again, that's, you know, we can, we can work on this. And I think, again, having these training opportunities and, and teaching more people how to do this means the capacity to build these vignettes and worked examples also increases. Um, so this, these top things really are talking about how we decentralize this, how we actually empower our end users to do these kinds of things and contribute to the community. I think there are some things that sort of have to remain within the key informatics wheelhouse uh, so bulk uploader, because it requires a direct connection to the database, it's a bit trickier to, to have lots of people contribute to, although that's not out of the realm of possibility. Uh, this is something that is being very actively worked on. 
uh, with one single group right now. And I think once we get that test case done, we can then start talking to other groups. I think it's also come up uh, in these talks, this taxonomy tool. Um, so coming up with new ways either of modifying taxonomies that are already in the database uh, and then potentially bulk uploading uh, taxonomic information if we have a tree that we can put in somehow a structured data set of taxa. The other piece uh, is the embargo manager. I'm, uh, this has been a longstanding thing. There are pieces that have been put into place, um, but I think we really got hampered by some personnel changeovers uh, a few years ago, and then the switch uh, to the servers, it, it really put it on the back burner, but there has been a lot of work that's gone into it. Um, the key limitation, I think, for the embargo manager right now is just its implementation through the API. So there is like a database side piece of it, but it's just a question of how do we actually do the authorization in a way that's secure because, you know, we can do it directly over the internet where we pass like character strings across the internet, but that is insecure and potentially, uh, depending on why the embargo is in place, that may be problematic. Uh, I think there's also uh, some key maintenance. So uh, we have talked about um, keeping Tilia going, uh, small fixes to Tilia. Uh, there are bigger pieces that need to be fixed as well to keep Tilia usable, but I think one of our big challenges right now is that we are serving a lot of different user communities, and those demands are uh, I, I, those demands are bigger than our capacity to support Tilia. And so I think a, a sort of bigger picture uh, a, a bigger picture view might be that we need to start really in the next year thinking about what what Tilia 2.0 looks like. Um, so I think that's that's really the summary. I know I wasn't as detailed as other groups. I did take everyone's, oh, I even see, I can't even change my slides. Uh, I did take everyone's sort of uh, information here. These are the summaries from the different uh, groups, but um, yeah, I think we've got some time to talk about things that I may have missed. I tried to summarize everything uh, if there are things. And so some of these I summarized by basically saying like access, these are, you know, truthing or updating chronologies. Uh, some of these things are, I think some of these things are, are more about like, how do we show how to do that rather than saying that that stuff is not present, so. Uh, yes, Sarah, that's exactly what this was. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so are there, uh, do, yeah, let's talk. Amazing. Okay, well, I'll start working on that stuff now. All right. Um, thank you, Simon. That was good. And it's, it's nice to sort of see the shingling and people are doing a good job of dynamically updating their presentations as, as the one prior um, brings in new thoughts. Um, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is, is I'll share a presentation. I've also been modifying mine a little bit. So the one that I actually I'll share a screen locally because my local version is a little bit different from um, what's up on, on, on drive now. Um, boom, boom, boom. And again, I just want to say again, as I sort of start off here, really heartfelt thanks to everybody um, who's gone so far. I mean, both in terms of everybody being here all week and chipping in thoughts all the way through. Um, also um, to Simon and Tomas and Sarah and Allison and Don for just doing really nice syntheses. It's nice to see again, this sort of shingling and reinforcing of, of concepts. So um, just a redo of my title slide, which is kind of reminding us of the workshop goals. So um, here, I'll go to- Jack, can you present full screen, please? 
Yeah. Oh. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so this was, you know, one of my attempts just to kind of do a first, you know, sort of summarizing summarization things that are in motion right now that, um, you know, we I, I think hopefully we'll continue to work on over this sort of spring summer timeline um, that will, you know, either meet some of these quick wins, kind of quick fix things, um, or things that are in motion will keep moving forward in motion. So, but also just a kind of reminder that this is where time people's time will be in terms of trying to time allocation. So Simon, you know, continue to work on this bulk uploader, kind of really moving from development to implementation with the lead to 10 group being the, the pilot group leading the way on that. And the more we can make this sort of a generalizable process that any group with several hundred records or more could work with, then that would be fantastic. So that and then moving um, Neotoma to the cloud, which will, you know, hopefully is, is, you know, we're going to try to do this as much as possible as a simple lift and shift of the existing, you know, code archi you know, architecture into um, the cloud. And you know, from initial consulting with the cloud bank folks, that's what they would recommend is change as little as possible during the migration. And, and that also we have a pretty good software stack. Um, we actually were kind of among the research groups they work with. We are relatively good in being kind of cloud ready. So that's that's a good um, outcome of our hard prior work. Um, you know, with Socorro, I think continuing to, you know, with, with the CRAN release, yay, but I think we can still look for ways to kind of, you know, finding places in people's workflows where helper functions or more training or more detailed vignettes would be useful. So that's an area of work. And then Brian Grivna, who's, you know, um, participated a little bit, has been listening on some of these talks, but you know, he's going to be working a new release that fixes some of the known issues with LOI and lithology uploads. So that should be fixed again. He's also working on basically doing a really kind of back end under behind the hood, under the hood kind of thing of how do we move away from the fairly expensive um, software licenses that that uh, Eric was using to you know rebuild and develop Tilia using these Windows proprietary packages to more kind of open, cheaper. Uh, more sustainable um, development systems for the Tilia executable and, and code base and, and so forth. So that's kind of like under the hood stuff, but that will kind of lay the groundwork for future Tilia work. Brian now basically understands Tilia, which and the, you know to first order in terms of the code base and how it's used. The talks that he's listened to here is also helping him understand how people use Tilia and their needs. And then I do see that the, as as much as time as time we have remaining on the current grant. It kind of the next big task is to making the incredibly onerous specimen upload systems better. I think that's something that can be a first first win. I'm not sure it's an easy win, but it's a middle ground win. And then likewise, I do think in terms of time of to work on Explorer, I think Susie's um, talk was really helpful for understanding that there's some basic data display issues. I think would be that's a I think a fairly quick win. Okay, so that some just kind of you know thoughts there. Then in terms of Again, reminding us of, of the timeline, and now kind of broken into sort of three chunks. We have this sort of April May chunk on uh, this next month or so. There's lots of things kind of in motion. There's this all hands meeting. There's a Pharos workshop. We have the annual report due, and I think it's going to be a kick ass annual report because we have so much going on here, and this all the talks here are such good material for reporting to. And I think we can really tell the story to NSF that there's been this explosion of activity and data going up, and all these groups moving forward in different ways and you know, the, the work that Bob was doing that I wasn't totally aware of until this workshop about, you know, papers in motion and so forth. So I think there's a lot of good things we can we can share back to NSF. And again, one of my big meta goals is to keep sharing to NSF the story that if they keep sustaining resources like this over a long sustained period like they have, just steady growth, steady community building, you know, um, you know new tools. So this is kind of this ecosystem that builds around this. And so it's really been, I think, a good use successful use case for them on what could happen. I'm gonna to try to tell that story in the annual report. Um, then we move from that to really kind of writing and budgeting. And, and I really see June and July as kind of the first half of July is for me at least the key window where I have the best availability to really, you know, start to get, you know, words on paper and organize groups and get, you know, sections allocated out to different groups to write sections and so forth. And then with that, that was sort of lead up to INQA in which we'd hopefully have as much as possible, like a, a, a scoped proposal text in places where, where possible. And then we can bring it to those at INQA for discussion and comment. And this looks good. And of course, we'll be like, not everything we want is in there. And that's gonna be part of the thing we have to think about is that's that scoping side. 
Um, and then that leads then to the final push about three weeks after INQA of just final text writing and 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 uh, um, getting the proposal out the door. So really the, the first half of the summer is gonna be the critical period. Um, and that's just guys, people think about their own, we'll have to also get you know PI, see how they're talking about times and people's travel schedules and so forth. So another way to kind of, you know, also, one thing I think, of, like Sarah, and I think one of the themes I think about is here is like, I'm getting a kind of a clearer sense from these conversations, all this work of like, what's the, what's the, not quite the life cycle, but what's the pathway? Because we, we start with people kind of putting data in, but ultimately what we want is to, you know, science to come out the other side and do interesting things with it. And so this is kind of my attempt to kind of come up with like, the, and we, I'm starting to get a clear sense of like a stages of approach, right? There's an early stage of people forming a group, maybe it's an individual, maybe it's a small two or three people, maybe it's a larger, pre-existing group, um, like say the Global Paleo Fire Database that already has a fairly substantial community around it. You know, they either, if leaders emerge or are appointed. And, you know, on here difficulty, like, you know, we all know that community governance is not necessarily easy, but in terms of like labor, this isn't like years of work. This takes a few key conversations and can, can kind of play through. Then we of course have the formal process of leadership council approving a constituent database. We, you know, again, whether that's easy or not, but we have an established process for it. That I think works reasonably well. Um, then we have this sort of stage of sort of training people up and getting stewards kind of up and up and running and learning how to use existing tools. Difficulty, moderate. You know, again, we know that Tilly has this learning curve, but again, we have systems of stewards training stewards, and we can certainly improve on that. We can you know make better documentation and so forth. But we do have some some pieces in place there. But then I think it's, of course, it's four and five that are really the critical bottlenecks, right? And to me, what's been, again, really useful is really separating four and five, that there's really these two distinct stages. There's a stage of uploading a bunch of names and, you know, and, you know, you know, uh, aligning them with the best available taxonomic systems. And then there's um, the, the data upload itself. And each of these are major bottlenecks. And so, um, and I, and as, as sort of we think about what we've talked about here, I sort of see this taxonomic management tool as kind of, dealing with stage four and making that bottleneck uh, less uh, intrusive. And then bulk uploader is something that's well in motion, uh, moving and trying to break through this, this critical bottleneck. And then after that, there is then the learning curve. People now put data in and they want to learn how to use this. And again, I think we have pretty good, like we do have a pretty mature set of, of analytical you know, systems and things are emerging. We have workshops and help resources. So there's stuff there but again, not everybody knows where everything is. You know, there's a lot more that could be done in terms of gathering and sharing and making uh, clearer our, our documentation. So I think that's another place we can intervene and, and help. And then there's the do the science side, right? Which is then, you know, it, but then it, people go off in their many different directions. Maybe we can look for places to do things collectively as a community. Maybe we brand, each of us is kind of pursuing our own, own research interests. So I think that's, you know, so when do we work together? When do we work as, as smaller groups? That's an open question. Um, so again, as I would sort of, sort of summarize, I, I, I call it our data out systems, like the ways of getting data out, you know, explore, you know, um, our, the APIs are now pretty mature, as Simon was saying. And so I think what we really need is to, you know, make these data input systems and data curation management systems more powerful, faster, easier to use. We need better education and training for the existing systems. And then where there will, there will always be ongoing, you know, needs to, you know, you know, the, the, we don't want to sort of zero out our support for things like R and Atoma. We know that there's going to be maintenance and you know fixes and help requests and new you know, helper functions and stuff. So we want to keep supporting them, but just maybe at a slightly not active major development, more of a of a minor tweaking tweaking level. This is something I, I, I this is a slide I created very quickly, and it's it's a mess I created it during the um, the talk that that Allison and and um, uh, and, and Don gave, because to me, I think one of the things I really realized during this talk is that we've had, you know, I think there's kind of emerging conceptual, there's a sort of starting conceptual confusion and some emerging starting clarity that we really manage our tax and names at two different places at two different levels. We do it inside the database when we want to say for a clear use case of, you know, the original scientists completely misidentified this bone. They found it as a bison, but now we know for sure it's a cow bone. We don't want to preserve a known misidentification. That's not something that I would say we're generally interested in. Sometimes it's more ambiguous. It's a synonymy, so we want to retain the original name, but also the new approved name. We want to do things like linking to the external authorities. So whenever we, we do have a name, we have some authority linked to it. That's stuff we want to do inside of the Neotoma 
database, relational data structure, and state it in there. Then on the other side, we have these sort of, you know, the, the, the Andre model type work where you're pulling a whole bunch of data all at once. You have to come up with some kind of standard taxa list and sort of aggregating things to sort of common, you know, names, even though things like Picea Glauca type might be a valid name, not everybody does that. So you have to kind of aggregate to some kind of common denominator. So you're doing things with sort of a research agenda behind it that wouldn't, not every scientist would do the same thing, but you, we want to have these sort of external harmonization tables are really um, needed as a part of the workflows. So in this space, you know, we need you know, better tools for the internal side, you know, bulk uploads and modification. We need to kind of you know, be, make better visibility of these ex external harmonization tables so that people that, that are getting created now, we need to have a standard place for storing them. We need to have a standard way of integrating them into you know, Neotoma R2 or, or other packages. And then just between these two, we just need kind of, a, as Don was saying, and, and Allison, we need kind of better protocols and processes, like what, what's managed where, what's our, what's our protocols for managing these things, and, and what's done in which, which spaces. So the last thing I'll, I'll kind of close with with my presentation, I thought this could be a useful way for us to structure the remaining conversation here. And we don't, you know, we can see whether this is useful or not. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying out and we put it to the group here. But I think we now have a pretty good sense of um, wish lists, right? People have come up, you know, each presentation maybe has some slight differences, but there's also a lot of commonality here. But we also know that we have, you know, a, a, a finite resource of people's time and, and money um, and, and so forth. And so this is one structure for kind of starting to come up with some collective agreement about the scale of this that can then lead to kind of prioritization and where, where we focus efforts. So this is, a, this is a pick table. And basically there's sort of two axes here. There's the easy to hard axis of, you know, how much work does this does a particular project take? And then what's the payoff, the, the gain for it? And then you can sort of see the four quad, the quadrants, upper left, if it's, if it's high payoff and super easy to do, then we should just do it. Let's just make, make this happen. This would be like the kind of the quick win category. If it's upper right, well, that's high payoff, but it's also gonna be a lot of work. That's a challenge. And so that might be like a taxonomic name, you know, management service. Like that would be great, but it's gonna take some work. We have to kind of recognize that's gonna be a pretty big investment. If it's, you know, if it's something that we've been doing that's really hard and that's actually not valuable, well, then maybe we should get rid of it. And I think, you know, Tilia is one of these things we sort of think about. I don't think we should kibosh Tilia, but it's in that space you'd want to think about, is this something we need to keep maintaining or is the effort to maintain it and sustain it too hard relative to the, the rewards we get for it? Um, and then lower left is, yeah, it's pretty easy, not, not a huge payoff, so maybe we do it if, if time permits. So, you know, of course, what's easy, what's hard, what's, what's high or low payoff could mean any number of things. So I kind of came up with some, you know, proposed starting, you know, frameworks here of, you know, High would be, you know, kind of as, as sort of saying, Sarah, I think kind of put it nicely, like all constituents databases benefit, or there's some big payoff in terms of the science we can do, the education and so forth. Low is, you know, maybe it's just a few groups benefit or it's not very impactful. Um, hard, I'm sort of defining as kind of like, you know, a three-year sustained effort. This is going to be like the, one of the big signature things we do with people sort of time allocated uh, over the next sort of three-year cycle. And this could be either developer time, this could be like steward, you know, kind of leadership time um, or whatever it be. You'll see I'm focusing more on the development side. So that's not the part I'm thinking about the most. Um, you know, medium is, you know, and then easy is like, we could do this with, you know, kind of existing people. We could kind of get going on this relatively right away. So what I thought we could do now is, uh, and I'm moving away from the, 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 uh, the, the screen, but I don't, I don't know if people can see this because I've just kind of created some little post-it type notes here. And it's, this is some of the ideas, not all of the ideas that we've talked about. And I thought we could do kind of a group exercise here in terms of um, putting things into these quadrants and where we think things go. And if we have consensus about, yeah, this is easy, this is hard, high payoff, low payoff, and have some, some discussion around that. That's my proposed framework here. I'm open to if this feels too structured, people like to go in a different way for this next kind of three, five minutes we have remaining, I'm, I'm open to that too. Um, but as it's kind of a starting bid to kind of show, how, show you how this might work, you know, that taxonomy manager tool, which I, which I would sort of see as this, this, this new service, it'd be outside of Neotoma, I mean, outside of Tilia, it would not be Tilia based, it'd be its own, let's say web-based interface or something like that, where people can either bulk upload names and or manage names inside of Neotoma. I think 
based on the conversations, people would agree that's that's high payoff. Every group would benefit from that. That would that would be one of the major bottlenecks overcome, ideally. But I think we also know that's you know taxonomy is hard in general, and the way that might lead to both. It's also a from scratch development enterprise. And it also might get in some fairly deep way things are structured inside of Neotoma. So it might become a full stack level um, uh, project. So I'm just putting that there as kind of a sort of start the conversation. You can sort of see some of the other post-its at right there. If there's, if there's, you know, there's lot, you know, there's so many ideas, I did not get them all here, but I guess I'll just kind of put up for comment at this point, if people would, if we could start to go through some of these and sort of think about where, where we would place them. Questions on exercise or comments? Or is utility of exercise? I'll take this as like not, not the way you want to run this conversation if that's. Or questions about timeline and grant? We could wind back to some of the earlier stuff too here. Um I Jack, I, I think this is a I think this is a really useful exercise to do. Um I feel like I need more brain space, <laughs> but I wonder if there's a way that we can almost like collect this exercise from everybody individually. We can talk about it now, but like I also make it available. Like everybody has a slide and they get to send it because it'd be interesting to see where different individuals feel things lie, right? To like in the end, I don't know. That's one, one thought. Um, That would be good. So we could do it offline and separately. I could do it as kind of leading and then just say, here's where I put things. And people could say no, up, down, left, right. And we could have some conversations. So, um, Allison? Hi. I, I am a little stymied over how long some projects would actually take to do. I don't think I have a good grip on, on the... You know, is it is it like a big long thing to do, or is it something that would not take that long? Your mention of correcting errors, uh, to me, this is this is a wonderful thing. If we could if we could do this, what you just mentioned as your example, you know, is it a bison or is it a cow bone? You know, to go be able to go in and correct that without, for example, having to uh, uh, replicate the site data information and then uh put up a duplicate and then remove the old one you know it there must be other ways to do a correction uh but i don't know how long they take okay thanks and that to me would actually argue for doing this a little collectively because i could start to move things around and then you know you know allison would say yes that's incredibly valuable we use this and simon will say yeah that's a four-year project or, you know we could i think this would be a good collective conversation but let's go to phil and then we'll we'll come back yeah, I think I, I was thinking along the same lines there, there because for some of these things, the answer would be, or well, the positioning would be dependent on the level of um, ambition that you put in it. So okay. taxon not, you could do a taxonomy manager tool in, in many different ways. Uh, you would automate as much as possible or manualize as much as possible. So it's good to discuss it. And I am a bit... Well, my my brain is full. Yeah, it's <laughs> so I agree, it's a bit it's difficult, but it, it would also be emasculating this with everybody doing it independently as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so so there's a couple more comments here about you know right are we just not um, right echo chambering and not getting all voices heard. Um, is this a heavy lift or not? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, these are good polls in either direction. These are both good comments. Um, um, I, I think for me, there is collective value in talking this through as a team, even though there's a risk that all voices are, are heard about this, because I do see that we are intersectional, right? We have we have stewards, scientists, you know, developers all working together. So I think there's a place we need to have multiple voices. So I will try to do this as like a slow process to kind of move things. But a way to hear, you know, let's keep an eye on chat and so forth. So if, if I'm not putting things in the right place, um, then we can, you know, talk it through. And this is not the final thing. I think this is like a starting 
conversation. So these sort of these two taxonomy activities. There's one, and I think they're it's useful to think of them as different. Like one is um, taxonomic manager, kind of bulk upload of names, and then the other one is sort of curating existing names. And I think they're both up here. You know, which is easier or hard? I don't know. Let's go to bulk uploader of data. I would put that, you know, I would put this somewhere in the high payoff um, mid range under the argument that this is also a major bottleneck, but it's also something where it's not from scratch. Simon's spent, you know, several years, the last grant cycle, getting things through here. So in some sense, what we're talking about here is turning the pilot work into a operational, you know, anyone can use it, minimal interventions from Simon needed, you know, documented workflows and, and so forth here. So it's kind of moving this to production production mode. Co comments on that? I'll, I'll do this. I, I don't want to rush this. So any people in terms of like where I've placed bulk uploader, Simon or others, thoughts about that? I, I think that's fair. I think that it's, I think where the where the hard work would come in terms of transitioning from the stuff we've done with the lead to 10 groups is figuring out how another user group's data model would fit into a template kind of thing. Um, but I, I think that's reasonable. I think the payoff is really high in terms of being able to bring in new groups and, and figuring that out. So. Like I'm, I'm thinking about CP, for example, and this workshop we have coming up. Um, a, a point of clarification, I think we it's framed or it's noted as bulk uploader, but at least when I was chatting with you guys, it seems like this is also something that could be used for individual sites, like an individual site. Is that accurate or? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, definitely it is the, the, because all it's doing is it's taking, it's doing a bunch of pre-processing. The intention is to operate on multiple records. Uh, so like a set of CSV files, mm -hmm. um, but really when implemented, it's uploading each CSV file individually. So yeah, so I, yeah, all the bits and pieces can go into Mm -hmm. uploading a single record mm -hmm. no go ahead yeah i mean as some of you know i've promised to try and get all the european insect data uploaded into neotoma for nearly a decade now and not got around to sorting that out and i think our last conversations we decided it was more a case of linking the data to our database that that would be a more productive way to go and that's not quite uploading it's something of a hybrid um, does that need its own box or do we consider that as, as part of uploading, but in a different way? I, I think that's its own box. Cause I think that linking externally, cause I do think I sort of think of use cases, like one use case is there's a standalone set of data that somebody's like, I don't want to long-term manage this, create a whole website for it. I just want to bring it into the so That's one thing But you're mm -hmm. describing something else, which you have a well-developed system, you have your own services and so forth, you have your own management systems mm -hmm. and the foreseeable future that will continue to exist and so i think that's where we want to like you know it's like more like a noah you know paleo we want to kind of crosswalk cross search yeah. you know yeah so forth yeah that, that's its own box so this is probably high payoff medium difficulty as well i would guess should be should be slightly easier than uploading should it should definitely be easier than uploading if i mean we're linking to existing systems as you say I would, I would agree. I, I might drop it down on the payoff a little bit. We have, go ahead, Simon. I mean, I, I think depending on how we're linking, it may actually be more difficult hmm. because we still have to go through the process of making that data searchable through all of our different APIs, right? And yeah. so we would have to figure out the ways to link the seed API with the Neotoma API so that when I, when, you know, someone says, do a site search by this polygon, we then also have to pass out, like parse that out and pass it to seed. Mm -hmm. um, and that, so I, I would actually 
say that that's a bit harder than the bulk uploader right now because it's a it's a completely different process. Um, yeah, I'm always optimistic on these things. But... Yeah, I mean that said, like th this gets to the democratizing piece. Um, that said, with like the bulk uploader really requires uh, administrative privileges on the Neatoma stack because you need to be able to access the database and and make modifications on it. Linking to seed really only needs you to modify the API in in general, and so that is potentially something that someone with, you know, that that doesn't have to happen with either Socorro or I or Jonathan, like or Steve, mm -hmm. one of the key people. Mm -hmm. I think we also, I mean, I just think this interoperability challenge is huge. And, you know, and, um, you know, we learned this with our ELC APIs with like one API service that go into PBDB, Neotoma, and Seed. And that basically required three different crosswalks and three different developer teams talking to each other. It just became a lot of, lot of effort. And so um, I'm more interested in things like Lipid, where it's like that's kind of a generic format that lots of people are using. So, like, you know, it's, that's more of a, you know, that's, so anyways, that's, but I, but I just think the effort is high, I think. And, 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 and again, it's like this, and I've moved it down a little bit on the payoff side, just because, um, uh, you know, we, it, is it, is a mission central for Neotoma to link to external resources or other databases. It's useful if people would, 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 would benefit from it, but I'm not sure it's as, as mission central as, as the, the, the things that are kind of at the top, top tier up here. So. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, people can download the data through the separate APIs and then merge it in their own way. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's let's move let's move through here. Um, uh, uh, let's go to embargo manager because I think I think Sarah summarized it well. Like some groups really want embargo manager. All would benefit from embargo manager. Um, and if we think about our, the new kind of emerging care mission, embargo manager would serve that well. And um, and also we have some precursor work to that. So if I think about that one, I would put that kind of, and, and Jessica, you're, you're gonna be able to move up or, or wherever here, but I, I wouldn't put it at the top of our payoff list, but I put it in kind of upper tier here. And I'd also put it about the same difficulty space as, as bulk uploaders. That's my starting bid, and we can move it up, down, left or right. I, I mean, I, for ethical reasons, I would move it higher in terms of payoff. Because I think, especially when we are talking about bringing in more international groups, I think that that like op open science goals notwithstanding, I think there are issues of equity in terms of data sharing that we need to recognize and address. And I think the embargo manager helps with that. And so I think that the payoff in terms of like, I, I think that the payoff is maybe higher than just straight numbers would would indicate. And so I would move it closer to bulk uploader, knowing that we have all these other things to put in there as well. So okay. So I would put it in the I would put it higher than bulk uploader. Um, because um, it was discussed from the beginning of Neotoma. It's in the Neotoma bylaws. Basically, by not having it, we are violating the Neotoma bylaws. I, I don't know that we're violating the bylaws, but I do think that it's important for lots of different constituent databases. I think, to me, the difficulty... Besides the IT difficulty, I think the governance difficulty and, you know, we, we've, we've worked on that, some of that, but like that was, you know, as Thomas said, like eight years ago now or something. So we, I think needing revisiting the governance aspects of and what does it mean to have an embargo manager and that, that conversation that came up in, in Tomas's summary, uh, maybe in Sarah's summary, you know, just about that that balance between data openness and data restriction and what you know that that's to me that's actually the difficulty having those conversations so so i've moved a little bit to the right on the difficulty scale this is both a development and a governance question but i've also moved up to shingle with bulk uploader 
because, and I, I, I will say again, just under the criteria of all groups clearly benefit from bulk upload. Like everybody is stymied by, by, by the, 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 the one at a time challenge. Embargo manager, I've heard a few groups very clearly voicing for it. And there are these new ethical dimensions. So I think that it's moving up here, but I just, I wouldn't put it on, I wouldn't put it on the, on the same, you know, plane as, as bulk uploader. But I also, this is where I worry about the echo chamber, Jack, right? Because there's folks that have consistently voiced this, like folks in South America with the Latin American pollen database with Claudio's group. And they're not, you know, not all those voices are here, right? And sometimes they're not here because things have not been implemented. And so yeah. there's a, that's, that's just, this is just a little bit of something I worry about, right? Is that we're potentially just reinforcing the voices that are here at the table. They're here at this table because, I mean, we, we you know, we, we invited broadly to the whole community, but I, I just, I, I just worry on the governance side, I worry about that a little bit, so. Yeah, plus I mean, it was there from the beginning. It was always promised and it was always put back. It was always sort of uh, a, a second to priority and it never got done. I think it's time that it gets done. So maybe we'll need to do some kind of poll or something like this because we just we're hearing some you know, different voices on this and four of us are talking right now. Um, uh, I guess um, my take there is part of why I'm doing this exercise is I don't you know I don't want us to overpromise and underdeliver, right? You know, if we think about the last three years, we we got we did a lot. You know, full release of new Neotoma two R package, um, uh, uh, new website, lots of good things happen. But you know, embargo manager hasn't been done. You know, specimen support for Tilia hasn't been done because we have a finite team here. And so, you know, I, if we just say yes, everything is important. We're going to do everything here. Then we will continue to disappoint people because of things that people have asked for. So I'm just trying to be intentional about this. And if the if the consensus is yeah, okay, given that we move embargo manager up, but it might really be that at this next three year scale, we get to do two things or three things. Like we just have to be really careful about that. And if we if it, if it's you know, bulk uploader and embargo manager, but not taxonomy manager, great. You know, but I think we just have to be intentional about the choices we're here because everything is good. We all agree that everything here is good. Okay, let's let's park that one and just talk about some of the other, other things that are out there. Um, help documentation, I'm gonna put up here as, um, I think it's also middle category and I'm also gonna put in this kind of middle upper space, um, maybe even up here, um, be, we can talk about that because I think this is mostly, you know, we need somebody, we need paid time. We can't do this with just kind of the volunteer effort. We've tried that and that just has led to lots of disparate scattered resources, but no, you know, no one's really organizing and, and collating and there's missing gaps. So it needs somebody's, you know, dedicated time to do this here, but everybody would benefit from better documentation. So, so that's, a, that's a starting bid, bid for that one. I want to say something about the documentation that that I agree with you that we've been, we've been we've been discussing that brought forward several times. Everyone thinks it's really important that we share that kind of knowledge and everything. But but then it, there seemed to be some pushback about things should be the way that things should be presented or that we only should use a certain source and certain format. And I would say that that we've had that for quite a long time. I would I would suggest making it just be a little bit more pragmatic in that sense and it kind of have a centralized part where where the different documentation sources are are there and then and then go for the the utility of it in, instead of expecting that things need to be standardized in a certain way so because i because everyone have 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 their own documentation and then if we can just we centralize that and just and just go with what what, what we have so I would, I would again would like to bring that up in one of the upcoming meetings and just go for a solution that is straightforward, pragmatic, an overview of of what the different people have, and and basically be able to kind of tick that off and uh, and until we have someone who really enjoys writing, you know, uh, a really nice documentation format and ask I don't know Chat DTP to make something cool out of it. Can I, can I just ask for a bit of clarification, Suzette? Do you mean the fact that like the database documentation is using Bookdown and and we would expect people who contribute that to use Bookdown or or like our Markdown? 
or are you saying something different than that? Yeah, it's a combination of not of not kind of agreeing on on what's what's easiest at this moment for people having their own very detailed notes and mm. not being able not knowing how to then reformat things for the perfect format. And that's why I'm saying like let's let's discuss the ways that we can at least fulfill the 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 wish to be gathering documentation and and yeah. accept that things are not in like the perfect format as Eric would spend you know his evenings on but just the pragmatic way because you know we're expanding on the number of stewards we're expanding the number of data sets and the proxies and everything so maybe maybe at least uh, at least think about what's what's going to be high in payoff and and on the easy side of getting it done that, I mean, from my perspective, I'm more than happy to to just take whatever people have and we can work it into like where things fit in the manual. We can copy and paste stuff in there and we can have documentation in whatever format. I think, um, I'm sorry if I, I was the one that gave that impression, but we are more than happy to get anyone's documentation of anything. <laughs> I, no, I think when I was talking, I don't, I don't have anyone in mind about the pushback. It's just, it just kind of discussions just developed over time, and then things kind of just died out. So I, I don't have anyone in mind. I just know that it's still there, and everyone's kind of like, oh, it would be good to have. <laughs> I so uh, I, I would just like to suggest that there is a second axis of difficulty here for documentation, and that is that it does take time, but that the payoff for individuals is often not high because they aren't necessarily citable objects, or at least people aren't, you know, like we, we put a lot of time into the complex and simple workflows, developing them and, and getting them out. But I, I highly doubt people are, are going to cite them. And so from the perspective of a grad student or someone working on that, I don't know that, like, I think there's that difficulty. Um, yeah, I, I, I think if we go down this path, you know, it's going to be a little bit like people who have their own stuff can, you know, finding it, making it easier to share. That seems relatively easy, right? A place where it's more easily to find things that already exist with minimal modification. There is some organization, there's some creation of new content. And I, and I tend to think this should be like a paid position, like a, a you know, a, a community support person, whatever we want to call, call the position, whether it's a grad PA or a, a staff position or something like that. But but yeah, but I think it, 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 we've done it at the volunteer level, which is kind of where we are now. So we know to kind of get beyond where we are now, we need to have somebody dedicated to this in some way. Jessica, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going to make the same point. I view this as relatively easy, <laughs> you know, high payoff, collectively, relatively easy to do. Um, and it's more, it hasn't been done because we, like we, we all hire sort of stewards, um, but we're not actually paying anybody to do this. So then it becomes a volunteer effort. And I think that there's two levels of review. You know, there's sort of compiling initial, there's sort of more expert review to make sure that what's there is actually accurate. Um, you know, and then there's the cascading, you know, sort of that accurate stuff into maybe a more stable resource. Um, I, you know, I think Suzette's idea of having steps along the way is great. Um, you know, we have this like random folder in the Google Drive that has a bunch of dumps, dumped resources in it, but it's not really visible or available, right? And so I think some of it maybe is just, and we have a, a little bit more of with the new web page. you know, maybe, maybe what it is is actually just a, a link on the website page and the resources document to like a, a uh, maybe, you know, controlled Google Doc of links out right elsewhere, right? And so, um, yeah, so I think it's there's different levels there. Uh, there's just, you know, like the Hope Project has developed extremely detailed, wonderful protocols that are project specific that serve their needs, but that actually have a lot of rich information for anybody working with, you know, chronologies or, or pollen, you know, sediment cores, et cetera, like that. And then in some database stuff that's more generally, it's more project specific. And so um, it's, 
yeah, you know, in every group I know, like Don has, you know, developed this for the diatoms and we've developed this, you know, some things for the vertebrates. Uh, and so, yeah, but. And so that's kind of like documentation, education materials, you know, there's the, this is maybe all different variations of the same thing, but just a lot of these kind of common resources that would be, we just need a place to gather and put them. We need somebody kind of setting up a standard system. In our department, we now use knowledge base KB, which is just like a document, you know, place and then it's searchable you can tag things with keywords and so forth to make make things findable so whatever but okay let's look at other things um so um uh surface sample calibration tools um i think payoff is is kind of upper middle because not everybody does surface samples you know, you know the, the micro paleontologists generally do the macro paleontologists maybe not not quite as much um and you know difficulty you know i think it's it would take some sustained effort to build the services and become a grad student level project to or developer level project to, to do something like this so i would put this in this middle space um and um let's see others oh, other ones people want to advocate for either either things I've got off to the side here that haven't been placed yet or things I don't have that people like to sort of see see up here. I mean, I think what we're seeing here is that we, we find all these high payoff things that are on sort of the easy to easy to hard hard spectrum. I mean, I'll bring up specimen support. I think that's mainly something that right now is supports mainly vertebrate taxa. Maybe some of the mid-in data folks have specimens. I'm not quite sure how much other groups use individual specimens, but that is something that I, you know, <laughs> I deeply care about, the vertebrate community deeply cares about, but it, it feels a little bit like one of these things that's been talked about, that's been started about, that um, is, I think was, part of our old other grant, uh, our, our, maybe our current grant, but that is not, you know, again, and a lot of this is because of, you know, Eric passing away sort of right when it was a little bit, not quite at the ready to go stage. And then, you know, so there, that's, but it's, it's, it's just, but it's been a big barrier, right? And it's in, personally, it's something where I feel like it, my visibility, the vertebrate visibility feels poor it looks like we haven't done anything since fawn map <laughs> and yet we have it's just not visible because we have like i have a whole database of sites in south america that is not added to the database you know and that's 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 that actually you know is embargo manager but it's also specimen level data in there so um yeah i, I you know when i write my nsf reports it just feels like every single time i say well Got all this data on hold. Haven't haven't met my grant objectives because I can't. So that's that's so, me. So based on this, I've been I've, what I've put these is I've separated the explorer support and Tilia support. I think explorer support is relatively easy, and and that's that's we have an existing structure. We just need to better re redesign some queries. And I put them in this kind of like upper like this kind of middle but above middle payoff because like one group desperately needs this, and then probably have some other groups. I think there's an also you know, make us better able to link to other communities of interest and, and so forth. So I think it also, there's a, there's an invisible community out there that would benefit from better specimen support. Um, and then Tilia, I've moved to the right, but we all know Tilia is a, a different can of worms um, just developmentally than, than, uh, than Explore. Does that seem reasonable, Jessica? Or I mean, I'm sure we keep pushing up or. Yeah, I don't, I think I don't, the Tilia difficulty makes it feel like it's a little bit more to the right, but I don't know. That's that's a scoping issue once we sort of talk about different solutions. But um, uh, I, you know, I think the other point to make here is that you know this is not the geoinformatics effort might not be the only grant. Like we might be able to work through some of these issues. Maybe not on the implementation side, but you know, with the Pharos RCN, right? If we're linking with museum collections that's a museum collections are specimen based um so I I don't, I don't, don't. Don't. sorry jessica uh, yes i just had a couple uh speaking of tilia uh, since you said that one of the processes that's 
hardest and slowest is entering data. Uh, I, I think anything that's going to help with that be kind of a high priority. And one of the, one of the things people have mentioned are these quick fixes in Tilia uh, that would make things a little bit easier and uh, providing the support. So I, I know you have specifically the specimen support, but there's other aspects of Tilia. Yeah, there you go. Tilia quick fixes. And then the <clears throat> uh, other thing, then some of these ideas are going to require a fair amount of thinking. And uh, there's probably a an, an initial bit of work that might be easier and harder work later that uh, following up with the suggestions for a taxonomy working group might be one. At least to get it going would be something that could be in the quick category. I, I'm, I'm, okay. Is that okay? Where I, what, yeah. how I can aim to where I place those things, Don? Yep. Okay. Uh, Tomas. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to second uh, Jessica on the uh, sort of push on the specimen support in Tilia because uh, from what we realized is that um, <clears throat> if you have uh, macrofossils that are radiocarbon dates and um, in the way Tilia is set up, they then would go into the macrofossil table even so they're, they're basically uh, you are from a different community and you just identify this this is also needing the specimens specimen support which means it's not just the uh, the vertebrate people it goes across communities uh, where it's linked to dating therefore it should be a bit higher i tapped up a little bit i'll tap a little bit more okay okay uh, we're, we're just a comments from the from the hour here um so this is maybe I'll just kind of do some closing words, but there's any I will give one last chance with anything people would like to get up on this board. Uh, this, you know, this wasn't a complete board. There's stuff to the right and things that people brought up that aren't here at all. Um, but I guess I just want to say again to kind of start to close. Just thank you, everybody. I think this has been incredibly valuable. As Allison said, there's been so much horizontal learning. We've all been developing different solutions and coming into common problems and so forth. I've learned a ton. Um, and, I, and I really feel this did kind of exactly what I hoped in terms of giving us some pretty clear guidance. You know, for me, even the wrangling about embargo manager, a long standing topic, it's really helpful to have this conversation, have this, have this out. It helps push it up. Like I downweigh things in my own brain. Pushing up collectively is a useful exercise. And so, um, yeah, I think this has been valuable. And I thank you, everybody, everybody for it. Okay. Any last either things out of the board or other last comments or reflections or questions as we pivot from this? into you know the, the the spring spring summer timeline moving ahead jessica i i just want to say thank you to you jack for organizing this right this is our first model of doing this virtual all hands um and it is, as you know, it's really hard. <laughs> and um, I want, so I just really want to say thank you for the effort and the thought and the care that you've put into this and into everybody in the community for attending and sticking it out this whole week. So, yeah, thank you, Jessica. Appreciate it. Well, one last, any good meeting should close with action items. So, just <laughs> we won't do too many here, but there's so much. This is mostly reflect major action items. Go have a good weekend, enjoy, enjoy the, the time. But I will work on organizing PIs and start doing some PI level grant management stuff. We need to think of Don and 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 um, Allison. We should think about how to get this taxonomy council launched. That's an important thing to get going on. So some some actions there. Um, and then and, I'll work on I'll work on everything else. Yeah, Simon, just build everything, get it all done. Um, but no, I think we have our development, like we have our quick wins, things in motion, just keep moving those forward. The IT team will meet next week. I think the IT team should just do some, okay, given this, let's, let's just kind of reassess, reprioritize and give ourselves a kind of four month plan. So, okay, thanks all. Thanks again, this has really been useful. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. And yeah, thank you everyone, this is awesome. Thanks so much. It's been wonderful. Bye. Bye.